God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to Shekinah Tabernacle Gospel Church. Pastor Barksdale here, just glad and excited uh, to share with you another Bible study recap and devotional. So we're going to be coming from 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. But before I go there, let's not forget to go to our Facebook page, Shekinah Tabernacle Gospel Church Detroit, and our YouTube page. Go ahead and like and share. Share the word. Share the worship of the Lord. Let's get the word out and of course, we would love for you to join us uh, this Sunday uh, for Sunday School at 10 a.m. and morning worship at 11.05 a.m. on YouTube. And so let's get into the lesson. First, Corinthians 16 and 13, where we're going to talk about being on guard. God wants us to be on guard. Let's get into it. All right. So we're going to talk about being, being on guard coming from 1 Corinthians 16 and 13, where it says this, the NASB says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. <clears throat> watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. And so our subject, what we're dealing with is be on guard. And this is coming from our series where we're dealing with continuing in the faith, not in the faith of God, but in the Christian faith. That's right. In other words, here's our intro. God wants us to continue in the faith, the Christian faith, the, the Christianity, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is a religion, according to James 1 and 27, that consists of a relationship, a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And so that's what we're going to deal with today. God wants us to be on guard, not on the defensive, but on the offensive. So let's get into it. Um, so point, point number one, first part where it says watch ye. So there when you look that up in the, in the context, it literally means to stay awake to keep watch, to be sober, to be alert, as well as to be sober. In other words, it also means to stay on guard for the Lord. Stay on guard for the things of the kingdom. Watch this. Uh, stay on guard for the Lord and be focused. We must make up our mind and focus in God's word. Watch this. It also means to be alert to spiritual dangers that they're going to come daily from the devil. We got to understand we have an enemy. Peter says, 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter says, your adversary, my adversary, our adversary, the devil, our enemy, our, appoint, our opponent who wants to take us out. The devil is real. He is, yes, he is a real fallen angel. Hallelujah. And he's our enemy and he wants to take us out. He wants to get us to doubt God, leave God. Hallelujah. And so he's coming with dangers and tricks and temptations to get you to doubt and leave God. So because of that, we got to be alert on all sides, everywhere we go, whether we're at work, whether we're at home, whether we're traveling, whether we're driving, we must be an alert because we got, we must be alert because a spiritual attack, watch this, can come from anywhere. So we got to be on guard. Watch this. Being alert strengthens you from giving in to temptation. See, another way to be alert is being prayed up, having a consistent prayer life, a consistent diet of God's word. Also having consistent fellowship with the body of Christ, being connecting yourself to a local body, connecting yourself to a local church, having accountability. This is what also calls you to be alert and be ready. So in a trial or a test or a temptation comes, you ready and you'll be able to pass the test and not fail the test. My God. First Thessalonians 5 and 6, the NASB version says, so then let's not sleep as others, but let's be alert and sober. Their sleep doesn't mean the physical sleep where you're snoring. It literally means to not be alert. So we need to be alert. We need to be sober. Yeah, don't be unalert. Don't be not focused like other folks are, but I need you to be alert, be focused and sober for the things of God. Be led. And another way you do it is by being filled with the Holy Spirit, having a life of praise and worship. So you're sensitive to the things of the spirit and you're able to sense and discern when the enemy is trying to attack. So that's point number one, be alert. Point number two is this, be secure. <clears throat> 
The next part of the verse says to stand fast in the faith. There, stand fast means to stand firm. See, be steadfast. Watch this. Or it means to be fixed in a place where you're unmovable. The enemy can't sway you because in you're in God's word or you're standing on God's word, you're standing on a sure place. You're standing on a sure foundation. Watch this. God wants us to be fixed in our faith in Jesus Christ. Let's be fixed. Let us understand Jesus is the only way. The Bible got it right. Hallelujah. And so you don't stray away. You don't move away from the word of God, from the doctrine of Christ, but you stand fast. Stand fast also means a place of safety and security. See, you can be secure in Jesus Christ, secure in your identity in him where you ain't trying to compare yourself and be like others. This world wants to be like others, but we can be secure in Christ because guess what? Christ only made one of you. There's only one of you walking around. I don't care if they make a clone. It won't be you. But God only made one of you and you need to be secure in who you are and walk in your identity in Christ Jesus. Next one, staying firm keeps us from drifting away. See, when we're locked into a sure place, the winds may blow, the rain may come, it may sway you left and right, similar to a palm tree, but because your roots are firm, <laughs> because your roots are deep, you won't drift or you won't be moved away by every wind, like Paul said in, in uh, Ephesians chapter four, every wind of doctrine that comes your way, every new teacher, every new uh, revelation you see coming on TikTok or every new revelation you see coming on Facebook, but you'll be fixed on the very word of God. Second Peter 3, 17 says this, you therefore beloved, talking about us, knowing this beforehand, you already know this, watch this. I'm not letting you know before it come. Be on your guard. Okay. What you saying, Peter? So that you are not carried away. So you got to be on your guard. You got to be fixed in that word. You got to be secure. Point number two, be secure. Watch this. So that you are not carried away. Don't let that man, my God, you a single young lady living for the Lord, living all you know how. Don't let that man that ain't trying to live for God. Don't let that man that you know ain't for you. Don't let him come and try to pull you away. No, you stay fixed and focused on God and wait on God and God will bless you. Same thing with that single man. Don't let no woman come along. You know it. it ain't God. Don't let that woman sway you or pull you away from God. Married man. Don't let no woman come along and pull you away from your wife. Married wife. Don't let no man come pull you away from your husband. But you stay on guard for God. Ye, glory to God. That you are not carried away by the error. Watch this. Of unscrupulous people. Watch this. And lose your own firm commitment. But we got to stay secure. The way we stay secure is by staying in prayer, staying in God's word, turning our, turning our plate down, staying filled with the spirit, yielding to the spirit. And that will strengthen the security that we have in Christ. That's point number two. And my last point, point number three is this, be courageous. God wants us to be courageous. So he says here, the King James says, quit you like men. But here, the the, the translation, is it, it, it really says, be strong like men. Now, this is not gender specific, but back then in the first century, the male athletes, the male athletes at that time were the symbol of strength, of human strength. And so Paul used that because he knew the Corinthians because there, that's why they would have the Corinthian and the Olympic games back then in the first century. So because Paul knew they were familiar with that, he gave them something they were familiar with. So they understood what it means to be strong like an athlete. So in other words, also be courageous, be brave. Watch this, walk in God's courage. Be brave in God. And the way to be brave in God is to yield to the Holy Ghost, is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Let Jesus, let me go back to my point three. Let Jesus empower you how he's able to do it by you studying and speaking his word, by taking that personal time out in prayer, fellowshipping with the saints of God, also fasting, turning your plate down. Jesus even said these kind, talking about demons. They don't come out 
except through having a prayer life and fasting or a life of consecration. Hallelujah. Next part. Your strength is not enough. Woo. That's enough right there. Your strength. Watch this. Your strength without God is not enough. Mm -hmm. You need God to win this spiritual battle. You can't win it on your own. Paul tells us that in Ephesians chapter six, for we wrestle or the fight is not against flesh and blood. We're not fighting human beings. We're not fighting each other in the church, but our fight is against invisible fallen angels that are employed, that are under Satan's rule or control because of his rebellion. And they're coming to take you out. They're coming to get you to stop you from serving God. They want you to doubt God. They want you to turn your back on God. But we have the power. We have the comforter. My God, John chapter six. We have the comforter who comes alongside to help us, which is the Holy Ghost. We have the power of the Holy Ghost that helps us to fight. Watch this. It helps us not to give up. It's the Holy Ghost. See, when you yield to the Holy Ghost, you can't say, oh, I barely made it through. No, you barely made it through with the Holy Ghost. You made it through with the help of God. You did that with the help of God. And we can't forget that. It's the power of God that we need to be courageous. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says this, be strong, my God. In other words, yield to God and receive your strength, my God. And here, Moses was speaking to his successor, Joshua, giving him final instructions before he was to die and saying, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or in dread of them, talking about the enemies. My God, don't you be afraid of your enemies. Watch this. Don't you be afraid to tackle that depression. Don't you be afraid to give that depression, give that anger, give that loneliness, give those struggles you deal with, your substance abuse struggles, your emotional struggles, the struggles you have within your body and in your flesh and in your mind. Give those to God. Don't be afraid to give them to God. <laughs> Glory to God. For the Lord, your God, is the one. That's a word right there. He's the only one can bring you out. He's the only one that can deliver you. He's the only one that can forgive you. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can heal you. Watch this. The Lord, your God, is the one who is going with you. Watch this. He ain't going to just go with you. He going to go before you. Glory to God. Watch this. He will not desert you or abandon you. He's going to be right there with you in the trial. So guess what? All you got to do is just show up. Have enough faith to show up. Ba -ba 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 -sha. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. Have enough faith to show up. And if you show up, God will show up. Hallelujah. Or in other words, be courageous. Be on guard for God. God is with you. God is with you. Let me say it again. God is with you. He wants us to continue in the faith. Preach. Share. Witness the gospel. Tell people about Jesus Christ. Tell people about the goodness of God. Tell people how God brought you out, how he forgave you, how he delivered you from your sins, how he delivered you from your bad habits. Tell, share the gospel. And of course, everything you need is in Jesus Christ. God bless you. We thank you uh, for watching this Bible study recap. There may be somebody on the line that wants to give their life to Christ. Or there may be somebody where you say, Pastor, I was saved, but I'm ready to come back to church. You want to rededicate your life to God. If that's you, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me for the wrong I've been, for the wrong I've done. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose from the dead with all power. And with my mouth, I confess. And with my heart, I believe that you are Lord. I give my life to you. I rededicate my life to you. In Jesus name, my brother, my sister, if you have prayed that prayer, you have been born again. We want to welcome you to the family of God. Hallelujah. We uh, embrace you with open arms. But now that you're saved, now that you're back with the Lord, you need a church home. You need to be connected to a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church. And Shekinah Tabernacle is a Bible believer, Bible believing Bible teaching church. And we would love for you to connect with us. We're going to put the information uh, in the comment box for you, but all you got to do is text the letters STGC 
to the number 33777. That'll get you connected for our prayer, for our Bible study, for the events we got going on at the church. That'll also get us your information so we can get you connected with us. Again, text the letters STGC to the number 33777. Follow the prompts. That'll get you connected. If you, we would love for you to consider to sow a seed. Amen. To give an offering. Amen. Uh, for the members, if you, uh, if you, you can go ahead and uh, give your tithes now. You don't have to wait uh, till Friday. If you have them now, you can go ahead and give them, give it, give them electronically. Glory to God. We'll put the ways to give. We have four ways to give. We'll put them in the uh, comment uh, box for you. You can give by Cash App, which is uh, Cash App, which is dollar sign Shekinah Tab. If you want to give by Zelle, that'll be Shekinah Tab Detroit at gmail.com. If you want to give by PayPal, that'll be Shekinah Tabernacle Gospel Church. And if you want to give by Give the Five, that'll be Shekinah Tabernacle Gospel Church. So we thank you in advance for your giving, for your connecting. And again, this is Pastor Barksdale just telling you to continue in the gospel. Be encouraged and God bless you.